The Home Assistant team just dropped a surprise announcement in the form of some official hardware that I don't think many people actually saw coming. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about it, talk about what makes it different to existing Home Assistant hardware, why I am actually really excited for this, and also talk about some of the common queries that I saw a lot of people asking when this was first announced. So let's do that in this video. Okay, so if you haven't seen this already or you're unaware of what this announcement was, basically to celebrate their eighth birthday of the Home Assistant project, they announced some official hardware called Home Assistant Amber, which is their first attempt at some custom hardware for smart home automation. Now, many of you will be familiar with Home Assistant Blue, which came out late last year, and you're probably thinking, isn't that their first attempt at some hardware? Eh, not really. See, Home Assistant Blue was essentially a standard Odroid N2 Plus, and other than the really nice fancy case that you got with the Home Assistant Blue, there wasn't anything different about the Blue to a standard Odroid that you could pick up off the shelf. But with Amber, things are just a little bit different. So let's actually get into what Amber is. Amber is an all-in-one hub that has all you need to get started with a smart home, but also offers flexibility for future upgrades as you your smart home grows. At the heart is a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, which can be removed, swapped and upgraded at any time with one that has more RAM, storage and connectivity, or even potentially upgraded to a new board when those are released. More on that later. Amber also has a built-in Zigbee 3.0 chip, no more having to plug in any dongles, as well as an M.2 slot for easily installing high-speed storage, or even AI accelerator cards like a Google Coral, and it also had gigabit ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, a USB-C port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and two push buttons, one of which is for a factory reset. Amber is actually being crowdfunded as we speak on CrowdSupply, and at the time of filming is currently more than 50% towards its $140,000 goal in under 48 hours. So why are they crowdfunding it rather than just releasing it? Now, I am certainly no expert here and I don't have any inside information at all whatsoever, so I'm just purely guessing, but there is probably a few good reasons for that. And the main one that comes to mind is that the PCB that the Compute Module 4 connects to is a custom PCB designed by the guys at Nabucasa, and there's probably a minimum quantity that they need to actually have in order to place an order and offer it at the price that it's being offered at. And it's probably a very similar story for some of the other components like the Zigbee module and also the compute module that is being offered with some of those kits. So they need to raise some funds in order to place a minimum order. Speaking of kits, let's talk a little bit about that. Amber is currently being offered in a few different kits, from a complete package with everything you need in it, to everything without the compute module, to just the compute module itself. Now, this is good because there are currently 32 different variants of the Raspberry Pi compute module that you can buy with different storage, different RAM, different Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi. And so this means that you are free to pick out the compute module that fits your needs best if you want to, and then use that with Amber. Amber is also being offered with some kits that support power over ethernet, which is always a welcome addition. Now, normally I stay clear of Kickstarters and Indiegogos because they are typically companies that have just started up and there is always a little bit of risk involved with crowdfunding projects. But in this case, Nabucasa has been around for a number of years and I think we are all familiar with what the team at Nabucasa is all about, what their ethos is, what their mission is, and I am very confident that no matter what happens, they will always do the right thing by their users. I think they have more than proved that now. But of course, there is always gonna be that little bit of risk with some crowdfunding projects, so just be aware of that. I also wanted to talk about the built-in Zigbee module as well. So Nabucasa has partnered with Silicon Labs to provide the Zigbee module for Amber, and it is a built-in Zigbee 3.0 chip right on the PCB. So no need for attaching dongles or Wi-Fi bridges or trying to find compatible sticks or anything like that. And then when something is built in, this is always a great addition. And this should offer much better native integration with Home Assistant 
everything should be really tightly linked and just work perfectly. But the other cool thing about this partnership with Silicon Labs is that they've committed to offering a firmware upgrade for this module for the upcoming connectivity standard Matter when that is finalized. Now, opinions on Matter aside, that is a whole other conversation. It makes complete sense for Home Assistant to be ready when the time comes so that they can take advantage of that from the get-go. This should also be compatible with Thread, the Thread protocol as well when that starts to be more adopted. So that is Home Assistant Amber in a nutshell, but let's address a lot of the common queries or questions that I've been seeing a lot over the last couple of days. And let's start with why is there Zigbee but no Z-Wave or Wi-Fi? Paulus mentioned during the announcement that they did want to include Z-Wave and also Wi-Fi, but there were some technical challenges there. The first one is that the FCC rules and regulations for getting a device like this approved becomes much more difficult when there is more than one radio on a device. So that's why they aren't offering any kits that include Wi-Fi, but that is an easy workaround since you can easily add your own compute module that does have have Wi-Fi and in the case of Z-Wave there is also an additional challenge there that the Z-Wave Alliance has to approve all devices before they can go on sale as well as approve the Z-Wave integration inside Home Assistant. So that combined with the multiple radio thing is the reason for no Z-Wave and no Wi-Fi at the moment. The other issue I saw was from people who had bought a Home Assistant Blue feeling like their device had just been made obsolete which I do understand is especially those who had just picked up a blue. But no matter when they made this announcement, people would have been upset about it. And it's no different, for example, to a new iPhone being released every year. Could they have waited a little bit longer, maybe even a year before replacing the blue? Sure. But the shipping times for Amber won't be until mid-2022 anyways, in which case the Blue will have been out for a year and a half at that point. And it's also not like your Blue has suddenly stopped working because Amber was announced. It's still a perfectly good device and in fact the CPU is actually a little bit stronger on the Blue than it is on Amber, so it's far from obsolete. And the guys are actually committed to supporting the Blue for a long time to come, so there is no need to worry about that. That. Finally, how do we know that the Amber will be compatible with the next compute module that comes out whenever that is, the compute module 5? Because that is one of the main advantages of the Amber is that you can swap out and replace the compute module uh, and in theory swap out with one that is more powerful in the future. And the truth is, we don't. However, the Raspberry Pi Foundation does have a good track record of maintaining backwards and forwards compatibility with regards to form factor and also GPIO pins. For example, the GPIO pinout hasn't changed for a long time on the Pi ever since the first revision. They did unfortunately break backwards compatibility from the Compute Module 3 to the 4. However, that wasn't for no good reason. That was actually to change to a higher speed connector for PCI Express connectivity. So we can't say for certain, but I would like to think that the next compute module will be compatible, but only time will tell. In terms of my thoughts on Amber, I think it is a fantastic little device and I for one, am really happy to see Home Assistant start to get into some hardware here. It's actually something I've been wanting to see for a long time. First they had the blue, which was designed and manufactured by someone else. And now they've announced Amber, which feels like the next sort of evolution where there is actually some of their own custom designed hardware going in here with some help from familiar faces. And the advantage of having their own hardware is that it allows them to more tightly integrate the hardware and software so that things work more seamlessly together, which I am definitely in favour for, so long as it doesn't impact or lock out features from people who want to run their own hardware like they do now. But again, coming back to Home Assistant ethos and track record, I am very confident that they will always do the right thing by their users, no matter what. One thing I would like to see from Amber is an in improved install process for beginners, which is what I feel is a sticking point for a lot of people. What would actually be really cool to see is if Amber had some sort of ba backup flash that contained like a base version of Home Assistant that couldn't be modified by the user, that whenever you press the factory reset button, it would actually automatically copy that backup flash over to the 
primary storage and you instantly have a fresh copy of Home Assistant again. No messing about with USB sticks or SD cards or anything like that, just instantly back up and running. It's kind of like motherboards and also GPUs for computers. They often have a backup flash um, for the BIOS so that whenever, if you make a mistake on the primary BIOS, you can automatically press a button and it will copy back over the backup flash over onto the main storage. That would be really cool uh, and really slick and that would really improve the install process. Not sure if that's possible or even planned with Amber, but just something I thought of. So there we go, that is my thoughts on the new Home Assistant Amber. Obviously I haven't got my hands on one yet and I haven't been able to test it yet and they aren't going to be shipping for a little while to come. But as soon as I do have one, you know, I will be keen to show you guys how it works and we will test it out to the max. But if you do want to back this project and pick up an Amber for yourself and you want to actually see Amber become a reality, please consider backing the project if you can. Like I say, it's already more than 50% backed at the time of filming. So if you do want to get your hands on the first batch, then you'll probably want to get in soon. I'll have the link down in the description, of course, for those of you who want to check out the new Home Assistant Amber. Other than that, please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments box down below. Really interested to hear what you guys think about this new hardware from Home Assistant. Really interesting. I don't think many people saw this coming. So yeah, let's have a friendly discussion down in the comments. If you want to support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.